mm-hmm. Christian coming back. They did a, yeah. a show long angle with Christian, Randy Orton, uh, you know, two total pros edge. Uh, he had the, you know, wrestled the, the build as the greatest match of all time against Randy Orton, which was, it was really damn good. It would have been even better with, uh, with the crowd. I actually thought it was a great match. And if it was in front of an audience, it, it, it would have been fantastic. Just that much better. Um, but edge got injured. Uh, they had taped that match and they taped the whole thing. Edge was fine. And then they re- reshot some of the, the spots in the match. And it was when they were reshooting those spots, Edge suffered a torn triceps. And uh, there was a tear on his right arm uh, while doing the retakes. And he had surgery actually right before the match aired. So he's going to be out for a while. That's that's unfortunate. And they, they an edge, I talked to him there a couple times before he went back. We we're just talking about stem cells and stuff, and uh, hopefully he makes a trip down there after you get that surgery because the stem cells will, will help rapidly increase the recovery time on all that. But it's unfortunate just recording like that multiple takes after you go to your match, and you know, I I would I personally would not want to do that. I wouldn't want anything to do with that at all. I want to go do my match and I want to, I want to get the fuck out. Um, because it's, that's what can happen with that. So that's, uh, but I saw Christian back in, I, you know, I, I love both those guys, Edge and Christian of nothing, but just such great guys. And uh, Christian, he's, uh, I hope he's able to come back and do something because the way both those guys kind of had the end of their careers, Christian went forever without getting injured and then just started getting injured towards the end of his career. And uh, some, I think taking some time away, we'll see uh, how, how he's doing with everything. But I've always enjoyed him. We always have a running. He heard my last name once and it was because uh, my last name is Reeves. So whenever we see each other, he, he, he someone said like something Reeves to him and he goes, who the fuck is Reeves? <laughs> so that's always the thing. He, whenever he's, he goes, who the fuck is Reeves? And uh, he's, uh, I like him a lot, man. I'm, I'm happy to see him back. And today, it's funny with Randy, man. Randy should just stay that in that spot. Just keep working all the guys from his generation that know how to work. <laughs> <It> still works. <laughs> yeah, it, it's the most interesting thing on on the thing. So right. you tell me what style's better. Right. Uh, yeah. I don't know. It, I mean, Orton, you know, he's spoken out. We, we talked about last week, he made the leg slap comments about Tommaso yeah. Ciampa. Uh, he, he's been doing media, uh, and he, you know, he said uh, he respects these guys in NXT, but they're not making real money right now, and they're killing themselves, and if they get injured, they're out. They never made any real money, as opposed to if you work smarter, you come to the main roster, um, then you make your money, and 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 you pick your spots and, and, and work safer and smarter. Um, yeah, it's, it's hard to fault that advice. That's what the business always was. That's, and I think that that was lost at some point in this newer generation, but it's not lost. Cause what happens is a lot of guys that do come up there, see the difference Raj is, is when you're working down in NXT and that, and then you go and you start doing five nights a week. Five nights a week, in four or five nights. That's what it always was. And maybe that's going to alter a little bit. But then all of a sudden you try to, to just work that style constantly. You see it all the time. Guys adjust real within a matter of weeks. You'll see guys adjust really quickly. And then they learn how to work. They learn because they're forced to, because they realize that that spot that they're in and that, that, their money, that money that they're making isn't, that they're not going to be able to sustain that and the smart ones figure it out. And Randy's just doing nothing but helping those guys out, giving them, giving them golden advice on that. And it's always, you always want, it's not the stuff that they're doing. It's the throwing away of the registering and the selling that if you in, in, in the lack of mannerisms and, and character and storytelling while in the ring, that if you just don't throw away all the other parts of wrestling, that is what makes wrestling and then you still do your stuff in there at the right places, you'll be an even bigger star. And he's given them nothing but free, great advice that each and every one of them should take. Yeah, absolutely. I always think back to Shawn Michaels and Undertaker at WrestleMania. They're kicking out of each other's finishers, but that's because no one ever kicks out of them before. So that's why it matters. Now, you're constantly kicking out of finishers. You're constantly killing the guy they kick out of two and make a surprise face. So 
you're giving and, sometimes you, yeah. you're doing too much people see too much and uh it just numbs you and by the way psychology wise for that that's those two they went in their entire careers in, in different things storytelling with the finishers and the finishers being built up and on the biggest show one time of the year and then what happened is in, independent wrestlers and people that's fucking badass we want to do that every night on every show and that's where that trend started essentially on a more mainstream level because people started duplicating that replicating that in regular everyday matches and that's the thing it's knowing when and where to do that and not everyone should go do that and that's again my thing is is it never going to stop what people are going to do you just have to know it and then go and, and take care of yourself and but when the whole industry starts becoming that and then they're letting it become that's where then all of a sudden you see a decline in things and so that's where you want to see the guys get more educated on the matter and uh because everyone will make more money the more educated everybody is yeah uh in other ratings news uh, wwe backstage they actually did their best number uh their second best ne number ever it had bret hart on the show also cm punk was on uh, 175,000 viewers, uh, up 56% from last week. Now, obviously wow. shows with fewer viewers, like if you have 90,000, you jump to 120,000, that percentage sounds impressive. Still not many viewers, but it's still, uh, you know, for, for that show, it's a very good number for what they've been doing. And I think that, again, you, whenever you do something and you see a, a bump like that, and, you know, because CM Punk, he had that, it, the, he helped out initially there, and then that kind of lost its luster over when he's by himself, you know, maybe it, it's putting those interesting interactions on the show. You have Bret Hart and CM Punk on the same show, right? That's interesting because you want to see how they're going to interact with each other. So I think that that's a, a nice little formula of, uh, and not to say that it's always going to work, but if I'm, if I'm there and I'm, I'm a producer, I go, okay, well, let's see if it's, if it's Bret, let's try Bret by himself next week and see. And then it's, probably not going to have the, the, the same impact. It's, it's putting two guys that people want to see interact. So, because both those guys are great as far as that and having their own audiences. So that's good for the show that you, I mean, no matter what you want, even though it's on a horrible night and time slot, you want as many people still watching. Right. Absolutely. And the, the good ratings continued uh, at least uh, relatively for the, the COVID-19 era. Uh, AEW and NXT both this week, they did their best numbers in a long time. Uh, they were both up this week. No competition. There was no NASCAR like there was last week. Uh, there have been some weeks with UFC. Uh, they, there was basically like no competition on the night. And it's uh, AE Dynamite still top NXT. Um, Dynamite did uh, 772,000 viewers. NXT did 746,000 viewers. So it beat it by only 3.5%. So still on the smaller uh, margin of how it's been beating the show in the past. But still, uh, still a win. Uh, AEW was up; uh, they were up 14% from last week. NXT was up 11% from last week. So both seeing good increases. And in the 1849 demo, AEW was up 22%, while NXT was up 25% in that demo. AEW still beating NXT in the demo uh, with a 0.28 to a 0.20. So. Again, uh, these numbers for AEW, it was their best number uh, since before the pandemic, I believe. Let me double check that. Uh, 772. So it was their best number since the March 25th episode. So that was the first empty, empty crowd show. NXT was their best number uh, since February. So, uh, or since, actually since March, since uh, March 4th. So, okay. Or sorry, February 19th. I'm, I'm looking at the demo. But yeah, February 19th. So, both shows doing well this week. Yeah, and I watched uh, a, a quite a bit of AEW. And uh, again, I think that's, uh, especially with them in the, I would just like, I can't wait for the crowd to be back, I think, with everything going on. And uh, um, they're staying on top with everything with, with NXT. I think with getting those crowds back, that, that those two shows become then. That's the night I'm really curious on those ratings, how they continue to progress. And, and if AEW continues to climb, everything's kind of on hold, I feel like, with this virus. We're not going to see like a breakout rating, regardless of what anyone does on TV. And I don't think that's going to change until the crowd is back. Um, 
Yo, thank you guys for watching Ryback TV. If you could check out my Shooting Blanks Wrestling Report every Monday on all podcast platforms, Conversation with the Big Guy Ryback every Thursday morning on all podcast platforms, and Feed Me More Nutrition, my personal supplement line, available on feedmemore.com and Amazon. Save 10% with discount code YouTube10 and save stupid. Why couldn't you? Almost had it. I almost had the whole video done in one take. <sighs> New customers, you can save 20% with discount code NEWCUSTOMER on feedmemore.com. Get hungry, stay hungry, feed me more.